Three, two, two one. Whoa. Holy crap. All right, today, the comprehensive guide to sending a GoPro to space. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Holy moly. Everybody ready? Hey there, I'm Haley Nelson and I am taking over Rob and Jonah's filmmaking together and the reason I'm doing that, much in the way that Weird Al used to take over MTV, is because I've got something really cool and fun to show you. Rob and Jonas and I launched a bunch of GoPros into space using a weather balloon. Now it took me a really long time to figure out how to do all that and to get all the great footage that we got. Um, so guess what? I'm going to show you how to do it all so that you can do this. I'm talking from the payload. I just like saying the word payload over and over. To the parachute, to the balloon, to the retrieval. It's going to be awesome. Stick around so that you can send whatever you want to into space too. So let's look at the big picture first. You have a payload, which is just whatever you're sending up. In this case, we're sending five GoPro cameras, and that is gonna be attached to a parachute. And that parachute is gonna be straight and flat on the way up, and then because it's attached to a large balloon filled with helium. It goes up, the balloon is expanding, it expands until it bursts, and then when it bursts, whew, the parachute opens up, and your beautiful payload gently wafts down lazily to where it needs to go. Now that sounds pretty simple. It's actually super duper tricky. First, let's talk payload. For my payload, in essence, what I did was just get some styrofoam and put a bunch of GoPros in it facing different directions and duct taped up the whole thing with a GPS unit duct taped to the top. Uh, in more detail, I put two GoPros going down, one going up to catch the burst of the balloon, one going out to the side, one going out to the other side with a picture of the Untamed Science crew so that we could sort of virtually be in space all together. How fun would that be? You wanna make sure that you have extra battery life because you don't know exactly how long it's gonna be to go up and go down. You can accurately predict it to a point, but. Uh, you wanna have as much battery life as you can. When you place your GPS unit, you place it on the very top because it can't be obstructed by anything. Also, metal tape, don't use that because it'll screw up the GPS unit. Regular duct tape, any color you choose. The GPS unit that I bought is called a Spot 3, but it was great because you could just kind of ping it from wherever it was. It pings every 10 minutes or how often you set it and it comes to your phone and shows you exactly where it is. Here, south of Monroe. Once you have your payload totally assembled, that means everything that's in there, it's going to be in there, your total weight, you're going to need to have a really accurate measurement because you're gonna use that measurement for all sorts of calculations. To make sure the weight of your payload is under four pounds because anything above that is illegal. Also remember on your payload to write your contact information. Next is the parachute. You're gonna to wanna to purchase a parachute and some light, strong cord. Now when you're choosing a parachute, you wanna match the size of your parachute to the size of your payload. The parachute that I chose was a six foot parachute which is not, it was just really overkill for what we needed. And so we ended up having to drive three hours to find the payload. Thankfully, there's a handy dandy chart for how to choose your parachute as compared to the size of your payload. All right, now for the balloon. Oh, these are the balloons. These are the balloons. When you purchase a weather balloon, you wanna get at least two because they're actually pretty easy to damage with the oils on your fingers. So make sure that you don't handle them very much pre-launch. And when you do, handle them with gloves and wear gloves on the day of the launch as well. They're 300 gram balloons and they're eight foot in diameter. They go to a maximum of 80,000 feet with a burst diameter maximum of 12 foot four inches. A lot of the people who launch use that balloon, it seemed to work fine. Then of course you're going to need to fill that balloon with helium. Uh, a helium tank. And I wondered if you guys rent the whole tanks. And I checked a lot of sources and it turns out that the most cost efficient place, the cheapest, and the most convenient happens to be Party City. Oh, awesome. When you get it at Party City, you can get it for two days. So you can get it the night before and then you can have it ready for an early morning launch. Basically, we've been shooting with GoPro and sending things into space. <laughs> and so go- Which is the reason why we awesome. have all this helium. We thought it'd be a waste to just 
to just return it, okay? I mean, we bought this entire tank of helium, and it's really expensive, it's like $200. You want to figure out how much helium to put in your balloon, that's also related to the size of your payload. There's a chart, the lift of helium balloons chart. Also, you're probably wondering when your balloon is going to burst, how high your balloon is gonna get, and there's a burst calculator that's really helpful for that as well. And the actual prep that you can do on the balloon before launch day includes putting a PVC pipe in the neck. Now, you take that, you, you put the PVC in the neck of the balloon, and then you cinch it down with zip ties. And now for the launch. Then you have to decide where you're going to launch and where what you launched is going to land. And you want to make sure that you launch and land in places, if at all possible, that are not controlled airspace. And you can go to skyvector.com to figure out in your area where those areas actually are close to you so you can avoid them. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well if I pick a launch spot, how do I know where it's going to land? Guess what? There's a really cool calculator for this at a really cool website, predict.habhub.com. You plug in all the information you know the day you're going to launch. It includes weather and math and magic leprechauns. And it gives you a pretty accurate description of where your payload is going to end up. We actually ended up changing the day of our launch because that day it was supposed to end up going into the ocean. Now, the actual day of your launch, we had a pretty sweet setup. We ended up bringing a big kind of drop cloth so that everything could be neat and tidy and we could keep the balloon safe. Now, you're gonna fill it up with the helium tank that you brought, which is pretty heavy. So um, you wanna attach your balloon to two different places. You wanna attach your balloon with your cording to the helium tank, and you wanna attach it also to the top of the parachute. Actually getting it filled, let's talk about that. Coming out of the tank, you have a, a regulator and it's gonna tell you how much is coming out, and you attach a piece of tubing. I had a piece of old flexible tubing and just attach that on there, stuck it through the PVC. The very last thing you do before you cut the cord and let everything go is check your payload, turn on all the cameras, cinch it up tight. It took more time than I thought it would. It would have been nice if there was a practice run for that because we lost precious GoPro footage time. I wanted to get the burst of the balloon in slow motion and it didn't happen. So the only thing that you have to do is turn on the cameras. Two, one. Whoa, <laughs> you can start tracking immediately. It'll give you a ping point right away, and then every few minutes you'll get one up until the point when she goes out of range. So here's where it's gone so far. Boop, 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 boop. We got in the car and went to go eat breakfast and I'm sitting there getting pings and then all of a sudden we don't get pings anymore. And it was very scary. Well, I don't, I guess I don't know. Thinking, oh gosh, what if we lost it? But it was just out of range. It was going to space. 45 minutes later, it got down back into a space where it was within range. It started heading in that direction and it ended up taking three hours to drive. To where we needed to go with a little luck i mean there's like there, this is there's like no houses on this plot other than this one if anybody starts running out at us with a gun then we'll know it's yeah we'll put on our like nicest looking clothes and <laughs> i think that could be it it could be accuracy of the gps within three feet of where we were here's the ravine should be there's Yeah! We found it, and it was really, wow, really exciting for me. I hope that you actually get to do this again, and if you do, please feel free to share your footage on Rob and Jonah's filmmaking. I will definitely see it there, because I know them. Rob's my husband. Whoa! All right, see you next Tuesday. All right, see you next Tuesday. <laughs>